Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Rob here from Southwest Florida Television. Well, let's take a walk out to the beach and see what it looks like today. I know there's still lots of dead fish on the beach. The red tide is present. However, the wind has died down. So that makes a huge difference. Beautiful sky here, beautiful weather today. Temperature in the low 70s. Absolutely gorgeous. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Not sensing any of the red tide symptoms. I don't smell it yet. That's a great thing. Absolutely gorgeous out here this morning. Got some sea oats getting ready to bloom here. They're finally starting to make a comeback since Hurricane Irma paid us a visit back in September of last year. The sea oats are so beautiful when they bloom, they get those beautiful plumes but they got completely buried. All along the dunes, the sea oats were buried by Hurricane Irma. But as you can see, they are making a comeback. They play an important role, they're vital to our shoreline here. That's what keeps the beach from completely washing away is the roots from all these sea oats, this grass you see in front of me. And it is against the law to, to tamper with them, to walk on them, to pick them, to destroy them. So keep that in mind. Lots of fish on the beach. The cleanup hasn't started yet, at least up at this end of the park. going to be a short beach walk this morning. I will do my best to check in with Roy, see how he's doing today. We're right in between tides here. Whoa, there is a huge fish on the beach here, but you can see the beach is still, still littered with dead rotting fish what a shame absolute shame all those beautiful creatures killed by the red tide very sad sad sight but I don't smell the red tide in the air that's a good thing it's still lingering offshore which is a bad thing. Oh gosh. Whew, it's ripe. Uh, is that a redfish? Is that a grouper or a red drum? That thing is huge. Ugh. How sad to see those big fish like that on the beach. Really hasn't changed much since Wednesday. Still an absolute mess. How sad. Really starting to get ripe too. It's starting to stink out of here. Such a sad, sad sight. 
beautiful weather and this red tide has to spoil it. Obviously there's not many people here. I see a couple people way down south. Looks like a jogger making his way up the beach. I know Roy's here. I believe he's up at the north end up towards Wiggins Pass. So sad seeing all these poor dead fish on the beach. Lots of lots of controversy over red tide. A lot of people blaming pollution, fertilizer, the nitrogen runoff from the fertilizers. Not sure what the truth really is behind red tide. I know it's been around for a long, long time, way before we've had been using fertilizers. But it's taken its toll on everything, even these poor little horseshoe crabs. What a shame. All the way down the beach, up and down the beach, these dead fish. Here in Area 4, they seem to be really bad. The red tide just comes in pockets. find some nice shells on the beach. The water is definitely a little off color. Turn around and head north. See what it looks like. It does not smell very nice out here, I can assure you of that. Not getting any whiffs of the red tide, but definitely whiffs of dead fish on the beach. Here's a beautiful little shell. Wow, a beautiful little murex shell. An apple murex, a beautiful little apple murex. That is a great looking shell right there. Small, but it's a almost a perfect specimen. It is. A perfect little apple murex. Very, very nice. That made my day right there, made my morning. A nice little nice little shell to add my to my collection. If you don't have it, if you live in Naples and you don't have any plans tonight, I'm gonna to be up at 
Felipe's Mexican restaurant. This evening, doing a little filming. Gonna have the, the Latin band, Unity Latin there. Great band. It's always fun, dancing, great music, good food. Felipe's up in North Naples. Oh, here's another eel on the beach. How sad. How sad. All this poor marine life destroyed by red tide. And right next to it, right next to that poor dead eel, there's a piece of a beautiful little moon shell. A moon shell, also called a shark, shark eye. It's just a piece of a moon shell. Beautiful shells. Maybe we'll find one of these along the beach in Iceland. It's kind of neat though, you can see the inside of it there. You get a good look at the inside, that's cool. The inside of the shark eye shell, the top of it. You can find some pretty big ones of these once in a while. Sure to hit the share button. I love it when we get lots of viewers on here and I love those comments everybody makes. Keep those conversations going. If you're new, be sure to introduce yourself. Let everybody know where you're watching from. And I'm just out here walking on Del Nor Wiggins on the beach at Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. Unfortunately, we're still seeing the effects of the red tide. So, so sad. So, so sad seeing all these dead fish. And they are starting to decay and really smell. There's another eel over here. Another poor dead eel. It's amazing how many different species of marine life there are just offshore here. This is a horrible way to see them. Absolutely horrible. It turns my stomach. Hopefully this red tide is gonna move out of here eventually. It has been here for a long time, the red tide, on and off for over a month. Over a month we've been having experiencing symptoms of the red tide. Darn it, thought it was, I saw a shark's tooth down there. All these little black specks, black rocks throw me off there. I think it might be a shark's tooth, but it's not. I'm not gonna give up hope. They're out here. They're, lots of people find them. I'm the only one that never finds a shark's teeth.
very shallow right in here. I didn't forgot to check the tide table today. I don't know if the tide's on its way in or out. You can see the fish just, they just wash in. You know, they die out further in the gulf and then they wash in and wash up on the beach. There's a little pin fish, bait fish. It's so sad. Hopefully, biologists and scientists will figure out a way to put an end to this red tide. I mean, it's really a natural occurrence. But then what happens when the red tide moves in closer to shore, it's a red algae bloom, the red tide. It takes the oxygen out of the water is the way I understand it. And the fish, I don't know, they suffocate. It gets in their gills and things. And, um, but when the, the algae bloom gets closer to shore, that's where the pollution comes into play. It feeds off of the nitrogen in the pollution. So, yes, it is partially man's fault. There's lots of articles about red tide. If you just do a Google search for red tide. All these little fish. It's part of the food chain. Sad. I've got some neat underwater video of these little guys swimming around. Now here they are dead. Sad, sad, sad. Just feel so helpless. All these dead fish, yet there's still beauty to be found out here. Beautiful shells, look at that beautiful black scallop shell. What is this here? It looks it's got the shape of a slipper shell, but look at that. It's almost iridescent. Look at that little shell. I don't know what it is. That is really cool. Wish the sun would pop out. Makes the colors a lot more vivid in the video. It's tucked in behind the clouds over here. We have lots of scallops on the beach. All kinds of interesting shells. Slipper shells. Auger shells. See that? That's a slipper shell. Flip it over. See that looks like a little shoe, a little slipper? The slipper shell. Another little scallop shell over here. There's a little mossy arc floating by. A mossy arc shell. Very common, the mossy arcs. More scallops. Lots of scallop shells on the beach. All different sizes and colors. There's an 
olive shell that just rolled up. A little olive shell. Those are neat, the olive shells. A lot of the olives you find have the, the ends missing. That's actually another shell. It bores through the, that, just bores into that and eats the animal out of it. It's pretty amazing when you think of it. It just grinds away and gets into that shell and sucks the little snail out of there. The olive shells, though, beautiful shells. All different colors and sizes of them. Finger coral, that's a little piece of finger coral. What else do we have down here? Oh, there's, there's a worm tip. The tip of a worm shell. You can find some nice worm shells here at times. That's just the tip. There's another tip. It's kind of a neat looking one there. Neat colors on that wormy tip. Lots of those right in here where I'm standing. There's just a tiny piece of a lightning whelk. An old lightning whelk shell. That's the top of it. Just the top of the lightning whelk. All these dead little fish. See them all down here? So, so sad. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Great. There's a couple jewel box shells. There's two jewel box shells. I see a little kitten's paw down here. I thought I saw a little kitten's paw. No. Roy up there putting his crutches down there. See him up there up on the beach. Boy, it is ripe out here. Hey, Rob, how are you doing this morning? Good, Roy. How's your foot doing? Well, it seems to be healing up. Healing up? Feels Thank pretty, goodness. Feels pretty good. All these darn fish everywhere. But Woo. I can't go swimming for a week. <laughs> and I'm wearing my shoes now, so I don't step on another yeah, dead well, one. I wouldn't be going swimming with that red tide out there anyway. Oh yeah, it's a big red tide. I mean, a lot it's of not, dead fish. Not good. Which foot did you mess up? The right one. The right foot? Yeah. Mm. So did it start swelling up? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But I went to the doctor and he said it was infected. Yeah. So oh, he yeah. gave me two big shots, a tetanus shot and one other shot. That's not good. So, I don't know if I'm going to walk barefoot after this because I've got a little cut from shells occasionally too. And I guess it just isn't worth it getting an infection. Yeah, it's probably better to keep shoes on if the last thing have, you want to do is lose a foot. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard a lady, he little, little uh, cut coming down off a ladder off a boat to swim, lost her leg. Really, from yeah. infection? Yeah, infection That's in terrible. the water. Yeah. And I had a little ding on one hand, and the boy had swelled way up when the doctor, he said, lucky you didn't lose your hand. Mm. So, I don't know, infections are a sneaky business. Oh, they sure are. You really can't <laughs> mess around. <laughs> Those little germs are always active and lurking. I definitely wash off good when I get home from the beach here. Yeah, boy, yeah I, I take a big shower. Say, have you, have you uh, talked to anybody about... Uh, getting to so I can see some of those old Facebooks where where I had kind of you uh, conned me into a, a wisdom of the day or something. Well, they're all there. Just uh, go on the Facebook page and look. There, all of them are there. All well, these videos. Really, you just kind of go into Facebook. Go on the Southwest Florida Television and start looking at the 
all of our videos there. Okay, I'll and see if I can find them. So just remember, when you're on Facebook, you should see them. You should get emails every day when you're in these videos. It's set up for you to get emails. Correct, correct. And I sent you an email yesterday. Did you get that for the publisher? No. Well, check your emails. I sent you all the information. They, one of the publishing companies where they just they do all the work. They print the books. They mail them out for you. They track your orders. Yeah, you don't there have to do was a publisher I talked to. I don't know if it's the same one. I just got it out of the yellow pages. But you had a publisher, huh? Yeah. And yeah. It's on the email. They all they all usually get about fifty percent. I kind of figured that'd be about it. Yeah. I don't know what it'll sell for. Well, they'll tell you. They'll give you an idea of what it'll sell for. Yeah, the one I talked to, uh, the lady said that uh, when I get my manuscript, which has to be typed. Oh, and I found oh, yeah. a typist, too. A, no, a it secretary. needs to be done in a computer. Huh? You, are you not writing this in your computer? No, I write, write it longhand on paper. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, I, you mean I could type it in a computer? Yeah, so it's an electronic document. I mean, you have to format it into a book format. It has to be put into a book format. You gotta have. I mean, there's a lot of work writing a book. It's not just well, sitting down I'm writing. Down I'm ideas. about half done. I, I write it on pages of paper, and then I got a uh, typist. She's gonna type it up for me. How many chapters is it gonna be? Well, I got about a, maybe a dozen now, and probably wow. a few more. So where do we start at? Where does it begin? Well, it's the beginning. <laughs> Where do we start the book? And it goes to the end. <laughs> well, I got a lot of different chapters. I, I think it's gonna be kind of interesting, really. I mean, yeah. I mean, normally it takes a while to write a book, not just a couple days. Well, I've been working at. I work a couple hours every day. Yeah. Normally it takes you know a year to write a good book. Well, you know, just take me a year. You got there's a lot of things that you're gonna be wanting to add to that book. I got a couple more months to go. Yeah, and there's a lot of things. I got a, I got a nice title for it. How how I've lived to be almost a hundred. I'm gonna call it almost a hundred. Well, what happens when you're 101? Well, I'll rewrite the book. I'm gonna have to republish the book. Yeah. How I lived to be almost a hundred and enjoyed <laughs> and enjoyed the journey. Enjoyed the journey. There you go. <laughs> that is perfect. I thought that well, uh, maybe I appreciate it with tip tips on how I. Should I say tips on how I live to be a hundred? There you or? go. Yeah, heck. Well, there'll tips. be. Well, there's twenty thousand people here ready to buy your book. Wow, twenty thousand! <laughs> oh boy. Now let's It'll see if I, get, if I get if I get nineteen ninety five for the book. That comes out to be a nice piece of cash. There you go. <laughs> well, you then have to pay all your expenses. I don't know. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you if I put it onto uh, uh, a. Um, what do you call it uh, on the uh, computer thing? What, a website or something? What, what is? Oh, you don't need a website. That's why you deal with these publishing companies. You just, so the publisher would do it. Yeah, it's all linked. It goes into, it goes on to Barnes and Noble, Amazon, it goes into all the different bookstores, websites. Yeah, yeah you, you don't need the publisher. Yeah. You know, uh, sure if if you want to do a website, now you're gonna have to hire somebody to manage your website every day. I mean, you don't want to be involved with any of that. No, I, I'd rather. I mean, just, you can't. You have a hard enough time turning the computer on. <laughs> you got that right. You know, you just let this let a, a publisher, an online publisher, deal with the printing. Do and they the, have the websites then too? Yeah. Oh, they got everything, huh? Yeah. So I need a good. Publisher. You just need to market yourself. You huh? need to figure out how to get the word out about your book. I'm I'm working on the word. Well, the the publisher will market it. I imagine. Hmm. I got to send it to the publisher. If you want, yeah, marketing and publishing are two different things. Well, if, if the publisher, <laughs> just like if you you can make your Hazi car, but now you got to sell it. You got to have. I thought the publisher markets it, doesn't he? He uh, sends it to all the different outlets. They send marketing. it. Yeah, they it just becomes available, right? But they don't. Does it, they might do a one one time little hit. Hey, we added this book. Yeah. They, they don't advertise for Being you. on the website. Yeah. So then I, sh I have to do the website. No, you don't need a website. You just use social media to promote. Your social media. Yeah. Facebook get... and Instagram. And you use those outlets to promote your book. And then once you start making sales, maybe worry about a website. I guess I don't know what that... But you have to have somebody managing you. It's not just... 
making a website, you have to manage the website and keep it updated. So I don't need a website, huh? and, it's, and a website would be kind of pointless and if you didn't have like a blog on there where you could converse with the people. And that's just more headaches. That'd be getting on there, chatting with people. Huh. You know, no, I just want to make it available. And I guess I don't know how to do first that. First thing you do is just get the book written. Okay. And then you got to get it in book format. I didn't do that. You got to have it all laid out electronically. I get it printed. I got a printer. No, you don't need to print it. They print it for you. You just you, you just give them the document. You just you just give right, them the right. book. Yeah, right. And they it's print the printer's it. job. Yeah. If you want, yeah. There's a lot that goes into making a book. I mean, the the more you do on your end, the cheaper it's going to be. Well, I. I mean, if you if you just hand them some typed out papers. It's going to cost a lot of money to get the book, you know, published, printed. That's a lot of work. Well, there's various different words here, uh, Rob, and, and uh, I mean, you're doing... So there's all, all kinds of different angles here. So yeah. we got to just kind of... I mean, you, what you want to do is the one that costs you the least amount of money out of your pocket. Yeah, and the least uh, involvement. Yep. I agree. I'll I mean, work the, at it. Cause, I mean, it's very hard to get a book into a bookstore. I mean, don't... That's very hard to do. And you have to... Publisher does that. You have to get a lot of books. No, you can do it yourself. That's, people do it all the time, especially cookbooks and things. Local authors, they come up with cookbooks here. Well, I'd have to travel to the bookstore. Yep, you have to go to the, the bookstore. will do it across the whole USA. You have to have them USA. all printed. They'll do it all around the world. The world. Hey, maybe, maybe people in Siberia will read my book. People all around the world are gonna I'll buy I'll have to get book. a translator. Yeah, I'll huh. translate it in different languages. There was a lady on the beach from Russia the other day. I should have asked her, of course, I couldn't speak to her too well. She go. only spoke Russian, but if I could get a translation. And they don't even, people don't even, a lot of times they don't even buy a printed copy of a book anymore. You just read it on the internet. You just read it on your computer. It's too tricky for me. That's what I'm saying. Just write the book. <laughs> I'm working. Yeah, that's your job. I'm Get the book written, that. and people will, and we'll, we'll start right here with Facebook. I guarantee you, we'll have orders right here on Facebook. Okay. Well, I can get it printed. So are you where you leaving us? No, I'm going up uh, on the shade away from this. You don't uh, like the aroma out here? No, no, it's a little <laughs> too aromatic for me. I'm going up by my big pine. The tree. smell. I thought you enjoyed the smell of the beach. Well, the serotonin, Ooh. I like the serotonin, but not the dead fish. That's bad. Well, you see that big one up there? That big fish that washed up? No, That's... I didn't go down that way. Any sea well, turtles? Tell me, when I get my book finished, uh -huh. will you give me some assistance on what we've been talking about? Because right now it's a complete muddle. Yeah. And I don't know what we're talking about. But... Well, that's why I opened your email that I sent yeah, you. Okay. And there's all the information when on online publishing. When I can sit at my desk and take notes, I can get it organized. Otherwise, it's just a lot of talk talk and doesn't mean well, anything. Well, I can't tell you everything that's on their website. They explain what you need to do. Okay. That's why I sent you that yesterday. Somebody they explain, will explain it. That's good. It, exp what you have to give them, how they sell it for you, how they rep And there's dozens and dozens of companies like that. And yeah. there's there's probably hundreds of them now. Of publishers. Yeah. How did you locate this one? I just Googled it. Huh? I just searched the internet. Oh, really? Yeah. For there's hundreds of them. For publishers? You want on demand publishing. On demand publishers. Yeah. So if I go in there, I'd have a whole list, huh? Yeah, and they print and fulfill your orders. On-demand publishers. And that's how you got this one. There's hundreds of them. Yeah. It's... Well, I want to get the best one. Well, there's, I don't know how you find the best one. <laughs> well, what I, do, what I do is get on the phone. If they got phone numbers, why um, a lot of times big companies don't have phone numbers. But... Um, I suppose they can't afford a telephone <laughs> <laughs> or a secretary to answer the phone. A lot of them aren't even, a lot of these companies aren't even in this country anymore. That's you're dealing with people overseas. Yeah, they print them in China. <laughs> because I, I went to China, Google of, of okay. printing, printing, and that, that's where I came up with some of them. Oh, yeah. A lot printing. of Yeah, absolutely. But on demand pub publishing. Yep, and that's where they print. They'll print to order. Somebody will order and they'll print one copy of the book. Now, I got somebody who will print them and also forward or send them out if they want to do 250,000 at a time. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> well, you don't want to deal with a company like, but that's that's the real publishing world. Yeah, that's how it really works. Two hundred fifty thousand at a time—that's their minimum, right? Per month. <laughs> really seriously. Yeah. Right? Well, there those companies like that are all over too. Two hundred fifty thousand a month. That's the I sign a year's contract that you'll do a minimum of two hundred fifty thousand a month. Yeah. Mo these on-demand companies are usually around. Now, I'm not three hundred bucks to get started. I'm not objecting to that. If they could sell that many, that'd be <laughs> great. Yeah, what do they, how do they sell that many? Well, they didn't tell me what their right. fee was going to be. They were a little obtuse about obtuse, that. Obtuse, yeah. <laughs> That's a good word, too. Obtuse. <laughs> obtuse, I like it. 250000 a month. Yeah. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't it, though? <laughs> I think it was a million bucks a year was the contract he had assigned. Oh, nice. Now, let's see. If I got 10 bucks a copy, if it sold for nineteen ninety-five. And I got ten dollars a copy, and they sold a million a year. That's a little hard to multiply, isn't it? <laughs> That's an easy one. <laughs> but you wouldn't be getting that much on that many books. Oh, your percentage would go down. Cut to me down a little bit. Twenty percent. Oh, yeah. If they're gosh. doing the marketing and everything. Gosh, I'd get only five million instead of ten million. You only get a couple million. I don't know if that'd be worth it. <laughs> Volume. <laughs> It'd be terrible. I it? tell you, whatever it is, it's it's. I've enjoyed doing it, and I really think that I, I have some worthwhile tips. So uh, I'm going to keep doing well, there you it because I think, regardless of all this financing that you and I are kidding about, the maybe fact the is, um, I think it's going to it actually will help some people. Of course it will. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of people that buy it. And that's that's a high calling to be able to help people. Yeah. So I'm hoping that some people read it, and I'm hoping that my ideas are kind of new and unique and something that they, oh, they are. want to do. People, I'm telling you, it's going to do good. We got, you've got a built-in audience right here. People are going to buy the book right here. That's how it's all going to start. Well, there's a lot of little unique things. Like I was just thinking this morning about, uh, I heard about a, a, guy, a guy that ate a real hot pepper. It affected his brains. I mean, there's a lot of little things like that that aren't... In a bad way or a good way? Well, oh. <laughs> they're detrimental to his brain. A hot pepper. A really hot pepper. So there's a lot of little things in my book I'm going to expouse that, uh, that people, if they follow them, will lead a healthier, happier life. Don't eat hot peppers? Is that well, what you're saying? just be cautious about real spicy foods. Huh. Never heard that one before. No, I know it. A lot of people. So that's the type of thing in my book. I've no, got I, a lot of things like I that. I eat spicy food all the time. Yeah, I know. But, Maybe that's uh, my problem. Could be. <laughs> a bit hard on your stomach. Hey, look who's here. Who's out here? He's got a big truck. He's picking up Oh, trees. my gosh. This is... Hey, how you doing, rain? man? Ranger Bill. You got your gas mask? I, I uh, love the smell of fish. Uh, I bet you do. Dead fish in the morning. <laughs> How you doing Good. Today? How are you doing? Good. Oh, man. Good. This Keep is like busy. overwhelming. Roy, someone drop this off for you. Uh-oh. No, Roy has got delivery. a present. A special delivery. It looks like a book. Yes, it is, sir. Maybe they already got your book published for you. Oh, gosh. Who, who, who gave me the book? I don't know, Roy. There's any notes on inside. I didn't look. Oh my gosh. Where did they give it to you this morning? A special a delivery. Station. Somebody huh? dropped the gift the off for Roy station. at the front gate. It's Isn't that sweet? Station. They dropped oh, it off at the, the gate. Station. There you go. Hi, Roy. Enjoy your beach conversation. A gift to you is the book Path Between the Seas about building the Panama Canal. Oh, wow. See the next season. Joe Wartman. You know, oh, wow. I tried to get that from the library and they didn't have it in. Well, he must it's, have found that out somehow. Joe Wartman, look at Joe, thanks, Joe, my gosh. That was Joe, sweet. Joe, you sure are a wonderful guy. I, I was trying to get this book, I heard about it from Special somebody delivery. on the beach. Let me, let's see the cover of it. It was said it was such a good book. Let's see the cover of the book. It's the building of the Panama Canal. Here. Oh, it's taped on. Yeah, uh, and you want to know something? What? When they enlarged the Panama Canal, I wrote them a letter explaining to them that I was a registered professional engineer, which I am, 
Of course, only in the state of Wisconsin, I didn't mention that part. Thanks, Bill. They have canals in Wisconsin? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and that I, was I nice. Told, I told him also I could speak Spanish. I didn't, I didn't mention that I've got about three words, you know, buenos dias, <laughs> hasta la vista. It's and I, I, I offered my services to help him widen the Panama Canal. Yeah. Wow. And you know what? What? I never heard from him. <laughs> <laughs> what chapter is that in? <laughs> See, there's something else to I add know, to the book. <laughs> now I'll read this book. I don't know how they got along without me. Well, but that was great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They made it too. Yeah, well, thanks to Joe, huh? We're going to pick up fish. Oh, are you? When are you gonna? Are you guys doing that? Are you picking we're doing the it right now? You're picking the fish up? Oh, oh. Starting up top by five and working our way back down. Oh, oh gross! I feel sorry for you guys. Pick them up, there and pick them up. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. won't have any dead fish in it, huh? Well, hopefully. It's too bad we don't have a Long John Silvers here. Want me to leave some around your area here? Yeah, would you please? For the I just love it. Ambiance? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have enough ambiance. It smells like the East Coast here. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys got your hands full. All right. See you later. Hopefully this will be have the end. Yeah, on his way to... They're on their way to start cleaning up the yeah, dead fish. Good guy, isn't he? What all, a, the, all these rangers are really oh, they're awesome. Action. They're awesome. Yeah, the volunteers, the rangers. Yeah, There's so many volunteers here. I know. I yeah, it's not just paid dealers. A ton hey, of volunteers. This life? Nice that is a great Joe. gift. What a surprise. I'm glad I was here to see that. Detroit Radiant Products Company. Reverber Rays. Reverber Rays. That's Radiant his Products. Warren, Warren, Michigan. Warren, Michigan. I went to school at Ann Arbor. From the desk of Joseph B. Portman. Well, thank you, Joe. I really appreciate that. How did oh, he that's know? that's right. I met him down on okay, the beach. Okay, there you go. That's See, right. You must have told him you were, yeah, he probably yeah. asked you what you were reading, and you probably told him you were looking for that book or something. That's right. I met old Joe down here. That's right. We had a big talk. He well, that is awesome. about this book. I'm going to walk down the beach a little ways. You better get your... Your chair there before the tide comes in. in the book for building a Panama Canal. Your picture's in there? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, here it is. <laughs> Fernando Lip Lipisips. I know somebody that worked on that. Really? Yep. Yep. That was a few years back. Yeah. He's no longer with us. Was he a relative of yours? No. Just somebody I met in passing over the years. Well, wasn't it nice of him to give me this book? Well, that was great. Look at, no hugs? I bet, did you get any hugs this morning? I don't think I did. No hugs, but you got a nice book. Yeah, I'm really blessed. We're talking about books, and lo and behold, a book shows up. Yeah. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, from old Joe. <laughs> that is pretty funny. He left it at the park office. Yeah, I had a nice chat with him. I remember that. Look at all these jokers. All there right, them, yeah. I want to just take a stroll down the beach. I'll stop by and see uh, what time oh, is it. Here's a picture of my yacht, too. Your yacht? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Nice. <laughs> it's from the archives. What time is it? National Archives. What time is it? Time to go up out of the aroma. Yeah. What is it? Well, that's, that's my stopwatch. Here. The, the watch? The watch? It looks like about... 8.39. All right. That watch is still ticking. Yeah. Your beach uh, finds. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah, it was the right price. This beach treats you pretty well. People yeah. bring you cookies and food and books. Yeah. You find the ocean spits out jewelry for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love I'll, it down here. I'll be back. One of the pretty big delights is talking to you, Rob. <laughs> oh, Roy, I you love got it. A lot of, lot of things cooking. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you got a lot of things cooking. And don't forget Hollywood. The big author over here. <laughs> yep. Don't forget Hollywood. I'll Rob. be back. I'll catch you on the way back. I'll hand you the phone again and let you talk to some I of our friends. Wonderful Facebook friends. Yep. I'll, I'll, I love you all. Thanks, I'll, everything. Thanks, everybody, for yeah. everything. Well, you're not going anywhere. I'll be back. Yep, get out of get away from the smelly dead fish. Ugh, sad. All these dead fish. Beautiful fish. So sad seeing them all on the beach. This darn red tide. Beautiful big angel fish. Ugh.
The cleanup project begins today. The rangers are starting up at the north end of the park. They're gonna be working their way down south. They have a huge, huge cleanup task ahead of them here. Hats off to our park rangers and all of the wonderful volunteers here at Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park and all of our Florida state parks. We've got some beautiful, beautiful parks in Florida. A lot of people always ask, they comment in the comment section, if you can camp here, no. There's no overnight camping here at Del Nor Wiggins. They are not equipped for overnight camping. And you cannot bring dogs out onto the beach. You can bring your dogs to the park, but they cannot come out past the tree line. They have to stay back behind the dunes. So there's no dogs allowed on the beach. I'm a dog lover. I'd love to bring my dogs out here, but I obey the rules. Ugh. So sad, just, this beach is just lined with fish. Horrible, horrible this morning. Really starting to smell too. Feels so bad for the park rangers and the volunteers that are gonna be picking this stuff up. Ugh. Here's a little conch shell down here. What's left of a Florida fighting conch. It's seen better days. I don't know if the conchs of this red tide killed the fighting conchs offshore or not. It probably does affect everything. It probably affects the sand dollars as well offshore. That is, hmm, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I, my guess would be yes, it does affect everything, all the marine life. Hopefully it doesn't affect the dolphins. I know there's been some manatees killed by the red tide and that is really sad. I hope it doesn't kill or affect our dolphins. And personally, I have not seen sharks, any dead sharks on the beach. I've seen pretty much every species of fish except for sharks. I don't know why that is. Here's a big olive. I showed you an olive shell earlier this morning. Here's a big olive shell. Look at the size of that one. Wow. That's a big olive shell. Beautiful little, beautiful little scallop here. Poor, poor fish, all sizes. Look at these little guys. See all these little fish? These little pinfish all along, just all along the shoreline here. That is so sad. So, so sad. Oh my gosh, here's a whelk. How sad is this? Is this alive? A whelk. It looks like it's dead. Let's see. No, it's alive. That's a live lightning whelk. Washed up on the beach. I think it's still alive. Yep. It doesn't look like he's in too good a shape, though. There you can see the operculum, what they call the trap door. So that's a live lightning whelk right there. Actually, it's uh, what's it's the opposite of a lightning whelk. It's got the opening on the opposite side. So that is a live shell right there. Beautiful shell. Sad to think it's probably dying. Horrible, horrible, horrible. 
I don't know what to do with that. Just put it back by the water. So sad. Another victim of the red tide. You know, I, I don't enjoy being out here, but this is just part of the circle of life. This is how it works. And I think everybody should see both sides of everything. I'm always sharing the beauty, but unfortunately this is the other side of the beauty. Nice little cockle shell. Little turkey wing shell over here. A little turkey wing. Those are so neat, the turkey wings. There's part of a little kitten's paw. A little kitten paw shell, just the end of it. There's a nice looking little scallop, another beautiful little scallop shell. These scallops are so colorful. If you're just joining me, we still are seeing the effects of the red tide. From the red tide, the dead fish are still on the beach. The rangers are starting to clean them up today. I don't smell the red tide. A lot of times it's very strong. You can, it burns your lungs, your eyes. I'm not experiencing any of those symptoms this morning. Thank God. But the wind has died down, so that's, that's a good thing. It's when we have those strong onshore winds. They wash the red tide algae up onto our beach. The water it doesn't look that great. Kind of cloudy. Some dark patches. <coughs> oh, I'm getting a whiff of the red tide up here. <coughs> that, <coughs> that stinks. Red tide has no mercy. Sadly, it has killed some sea turtles too. One washed up here on the beach a couple weeks ago. That was sad. Little sandpiper sitting there on that piece of driftwood. Just perched there. That's cute. This is the first time I've seen eels on the beach, washed up from the red tide. There's been a lot of eels. More, that looks, that's a moray, a little moray eel. Lots of those were killed by this red tide outbreak, this recent red tide outbreak. Here's a nice little lightning whelk shell. An old one. That's an older. Oh, it's. I always forget. This is not a lightning well. Is it a pear well? It's got the opening on the other side. The op, a lightning well. The opening is on the other side. On the left. Yes, I always forget the name of this. This is the same one as we. The same type of shell that we just found the the 
the live one up the beach a few minutes ago. Pear whelk? Is that a pear whelk? Hmm. Ugh, just beautiful shells just mixed in with all these poor fish. Ugh. I just wanted to take a peek up at the north end there and see what the rangers were doing and then get back down to Roy for a few minutes and turn the phone over to him, let you ask some questions. <coughs> There's a conch shell. Looks like a nice conch buried here in the, in the sand. Beautiful, beautiful Florida fighting conch. Great specimen there. Always check, make sure there's nothing inside, no living animals before you take a shell home. That's a nice little specimen there. Nice little Florida fighting conch. Beautiful colors. Nice and bright on the inside there. Here's what's left of one. Just the stem of the conch shell. We call those twisties. Another conch over here. Another nice specimen. Two Florida fighting conchs. There's a smaller one, a younger one. There's three Florida fighting conch shells right there. Beautiful shells. dead fish sadly another dead eel on the beach I never knew there were so many eels out there in the water offshore of the beach here boy quite a few fighting conks up here oh wow look at this eel I hate showing you the dead things, but look at the colors on that eel. I gotta take a picture of that. Bear with me. I don't know what kind of eel that is or was, but look at the color on that eel. Wow. Sad to see it dead, but... Wow. Very sad, 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 seeing all this dead marine life. Look at all these little sandpipers running around. Holy mackerel, see them all up here in front of me? Man, lots and lots of fighting conch shells on the beach up here too. We're up at the north end of the park, the north end of Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. Lots of fighting conch shells on the beach up here. Lots of them. Great souvenirs. Probably the most collected shell in Southwest Florida. If somebody comes to the beach, these usually wind up in their suitcase. Just make sure there's nothing in them. Sure they're not alive when you take them home. Here's a nice, nice, big, big scallop shell. Let me rinse it off here, get the, get the stand out of it. I'm gonna keep that one. Look at that scallop. That's a nice size scallop shell here. That's a big one. Wow. That's a big scallop. Nice, nice, nice. I 
be keeping that one. <laughs> Getting a whiff of the red tide again up here. Showed you that red scallop. There's a black, almost black. It's a very dark red. There are a few people out here at the beach. People come down just to look at the damage from the red tide. There's not as many dead fish on the beach up here at the north end as there are a little further south. You can definitely smell the red tide up here. Hopefully one of these days our scientists and marine biologists will be able to figure out a way to put an end to this red tide. It's horrible coming to the beach and seeing all these dead fish. Beautiful fish. So many different, different species. Wow, look at this. Look at this scallop, that is so cool with the barnacles on it. Look at that. That's a keeper for sure. Look at that. That is really neat looking. Wow. Get the sand off of this one. That is a great looking shell. Very interesting looking. Very, very interesting with those barnacles on it. Definite keeper. Another eel. So sad. I'm gonna take a picture of that, bear with me. I'm back, sorry about that. Oh, here's a piece of a, another piece of a shark eye or a moon shell, just the eye, just the very top of it. These are really cool shells, the moon shells. That's just the eye, the very top. Here's another type of eel on the beach. It's a long, skinny one. I never knew we had so many different kinds of eels out in the water here. I wish I could be showing you them swimming underwater instead of washed up dead on our beach. A worm rock over here. <coughs> worm rock. <coughs> you can find some nice pieces of that on the beach. Very cool looking, the worm rock. Yeah, I guess the red tide's even taking its toll on our shellfish. A dead clam washed up on the beach. Just 
gonna take a peek around the corner here and head back down to check in with Roy. Hand the phone over to him again, let you ask him some questions. Remember, Roy is 93 years old. He was a World War II and Korean War vet. He was in the US Navy. He was a officer in the Navy, a communications officer. There's our park rangers beginning their horrible task of beach cleanup. Ugh. Gotta give them a pat on the back. Thank them for their service. These guys don't make a lot of money. For some reason our parks, there's not a wealth of money given to our Florida state parks. These guys are kind of out here on their own. So if you want to help out our park, especially our park right here, Del Norwegian's, Google Friends of Del Norwegian's Pass State Park, Friends of Del Norwegian's Pass State Park, make a donation, become a member. Help clean up our beach. got a lot of work ahead of them. You can see they're over here digging a pit up on the beach over here to bury all these, to start burying the dead fish. They're going to do that all down the beach. They're starting up at Wiggins Pass. Not a fun task. be at this for a long time. Mess. Yeah, it is a mess. Ugh. Well, hopefully they get it done. And hopefully we won't have another outbreak of that red tide, darn it. Hopefully that will has gone away. the north end of Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. This is Wiggins Pass. Just on the other side is Barefoot Beach Preserve. No surprise, nobody out here fishing this morning. It's usually lined with fishermen out here. Nobody wants to be out here with the smell of the dead fish and the red tide. You can hear the sound of the dredging barge in the background, at least I think you can. A couple fighting conch shells up here. One over here. There's a little fighting conch down here. Boy, that one's old. Look how pitted that shell is. That's a really old little baby Florida fighting conch. Some jet skiers heading out the pass there. They're brave souls. the Cocahatchee River. Wiggins Pass is the mouth of the Cocahatchee River. It's looking east. <laughs> I'm going to turn around, start walking south. This is what they call Area 5 at Del Norwegian's Pass State Park. I'm going to head back down to Area 4 where I started. Check in with Roy. Beautiful cockle shell. This cockle here. Nice cockle. It's got a hole in it. Hmm, maybe we can find a little branch to hang that on the shell tree this morning. Nice cockle. Ah. Almost, almost lost it there in the waves. 
That's a nice colorful cockle shell. Here's another one over here. Here's another one. Two big cockle shells on the beach. I think I'm gonna hang this one on the shell tree. If I can find a little branch, like it'll fit through that hole. I'll hang on to that. Couple of fighting conch shells down here on the beach. Two Florida fighting conchs. See, there's been a lot of those up at the north end of the park here. another piece of that worm rock but that, that is such neat stuff the worm rock just forms around old oyster shells old shells you can see the worm tubes such neat looking stuff stinks out here getting a little couple whiffs of the red tide once in a while but the fish the rotten fish are really starting to stink fortunately our park rangers and volunteers are out here starting to clean the fish up off the beach you can see them all here it's all dead fish. And this is nothing. It's much worse further south down the beach. Much worse. But they're out here. The park staff is out here on the beach picking them up. And then they're burying them. Digging a big hole up in the dunes to bury them. And they're going to do that all along the beach. It's going to take them a while. But thank you for doing that. They deserve a big pat on the back. That is not a fun task. Ugh. Disgusting. Disgusting. Sorry, I was just taking a quick picture. There's all kinds of dead fish here. A lot of mullet, trout, catfish. I've seen a lot of eels, beautiful angel fish. Look at that, that is so sad. A dead angel fish, beautiful fish. Sad to see it dead here. So sad. I don't know how many times I can use that word, sad. That's what it's all about. It's sad. Really, really warming up here. I don't know what the temperature is, but it is really starting to warm up. There's actually somebody here fishing. That's crazy. They say the fish won't hurt you. They say the red tide is in their innards, in their guts. But as long as you clean your fish, the red tide doesn't have any effect on humans that eat it. Well, we did find a couple nice shells this morning. It's always fun. Got to chat with Roy about his project. He's working on writing a book about his life, giving us some tips, how to live to be 100, <laughs> almost 100. He's 93 now. But we're gonna check in with him here. I'm gonna just pass the camera over to him. 
and let him chat with y'all for a few minutes. So if you got any questions for Roy, that's gonna be your opportunity to hopefully get the answers. A lot of times those questions fly by pretty fast and he doesn't get it, the opportunity to see them all, but he does his best. Let's see, I'm gonna hang this cockle shell back here on this tree right here. Let's see if I can find, I got this nice little cockle that I picked up. Not so little. I need to find, it's got a little hole in it. You have to find a smaller branch. There's one right here. Right up there. There's a good place for it. Kind of camouflaged back in there. How's that? Let me take a quick photo of that. Bear with me. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Well, that cockle shell is for all of our friends that can't make it to the beach to hang their own shell. You might have come to the beach and seen branches with seashells on them, wonder what that's all about. Well, there's several reasons why people hang their seashells on the beach. Some folks just hang them as a decoration. Others, they'll hang a shell and they'll make a wish or they'll say a prayer. But the biggest reason people hang the shells on those trees, on those branches, is they hang the shell in memory of a loved one that's passed away. So keep that in mind when you see the shells hanging on the tree. It's not just an opportunity to go pick a shell off the tree for your collection. Most likely that shell hanging there has some significant meaning to someone. Let's see. This poor fish, the poor dead fish washed up on the beach from the red tide. This has been the worst red tide outbreak that I have seen in a long time. We get red tide every year, but it has lasted, it seems, for an eternity this time. <coughs> There's definitely red tide close to shore up here at the north end of the park. I can smell it. Oh my God, there's a big moray. Look at that, a green moray eel. Oh my gosh, how sad is that? I'm gonna take a photo, bear with me. It's so sad to see these dead creatures on the beach. A moray eel, wow. Those are pretty ferocious. They definitely would put a hurting on you in the water but it's still sad to see him dead. What a sad sight. Seen quite a few different kinds of eels on the beach. Very sad. If you're just tuning in, I'm up at the north end of the beach at Del, Nor Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park up in North Naples, Florida. All these dead fish on the beach are because of what's called the red tide, which is a red algae outbreak. Basically suffocates the fish and then they wash up on the beach. It's terrible. It is a natural phenomena. 
However, once the algae blooms, the red algae, as it moves in closer to shore, it feeds off the pollutants, the fertilizers, the nitrogen and the fertilizers from the runoff from our golf courses and landscape. So man sadly is involved with the red tide. All we can hope is someday they can figure out a way to put an end to it. Boy, it is really warming up here. I am starting to sweat. Nice. No clue what the temperature is. There's that poor light, that poor whelk still here on the beach. I hope it survives. That's a live whelk right there. I hope it survives. It's not doing too good. Normally they would tuck right into their shell. This guy, I'm sure he's on his way out because of the red tide. That is sad. Beautiful shells, the whelk shells. So sad. Nice little cockle shell down here. A little tiny cockle, a nice cockle shell. You find lots of cockles on the beach. That's like the bigger shell that I hung on the shell tree this morning, just a few minutes ago. That's sad. There's a little puffer fish washed up on the beach. A little puffer. All these beautiful, beautiful fish dead because of the red tide. It's amazing how many species of fish we have. There's another kind, another eel, another type of eel down there. There's a bat fish. That's a bat fish right there. It's got like bat wings on it. That's a bat fish. Wow. I wish I could be showing these to you from underwater, swimming around the reef. This is the other side of nature here. You gotta take the bad with the good, unfortunately. And red tide is part of the very bad. Not a pretty sight. Today our park rangers are starting the not too pleasant task of cleaning all these fish up off the beach. Well, let's cheer things up a little bit here. Let's get up under the trees here and see our friend Roy. Think of, some, think of some good questions for him. Remember, he's 93 years old. He's seen a lot of things in his life. Seen a lot of things change. Changes in technology. Medicine. I'm just going to give you a few minutes to chat with him. I'm going to turn the phone over to him. He gets a big kick out of it. 
He just got a new book today. Somebody dropped off a new book at the ranger station for him. He was excited about that. One of our friends, Joe. He was really excited hey, about that. Reading, reading your new book already? Oh, yeah. It's really interesting. Wow. So I got to call good old Joe and tell him how great it is. Wow. Yeah, that's a great gift, huh? Yeah, I don't know how. Well, let's, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this here. Let me flip this camera around. Boy, I'm sweating. It's yeah. getting really warm out there. It's a hot one in the sun. Warming up. Let me see if I can flip this around. Are they around. picking up these fish? Yeah, they're down at the end. The rangers are down at the end by the pass, starting to pick, bury them. Are they they've cleaning them up pretty well, huh? Well, yeah, but they got a lot to pick up. Yeah, it's a long They got their go. hands full. Boy, how many rangers are working? Well, there's, I think there's four or five, five of them up there. Oh, they're really getting at it. Yep, they got a lot of cleanup to do, though. They'll probably take them. They should get one of those three, big machines days. like they got down by the condos there south of us. Yeah, they don't have the money for it. If somebody wants to give them the money, they'd love that. Well, maybe they could rent one. I somebody know. on Facebook, if they want to give them some money to clean the beach up here. You think they could rent a tractor with a rake and just go along and rake up big piles and bury them? Yeah. Get a backhoe and dig a big hole. Yeah, and plop well, them all in. Let me flip this around here. I can't even see the screen. It's so dark right now. I don't know why it got so dark. But, um... Whew, I'm a mess here, sweating. Can you, can you see that, Roy? Can you see that? Yeah, I see an ocean. Yeah. <clears throat> you see an ocean? You don't see you? Oh, yeah, there I can am. Can you see the questions there? Well, let me read them. It's kind see, of bobbing yeah, around. See if, yeah, see if, if you hold it there. Maybe well, I... serious. Could Roy play a tune? Does my body lie over the ocean? <laughs> Please, thank you. <laughs> oh, boy, they couldn't read the rest of it. Bonnie Clayton, great idea, Roy. I don't know which idea we're talking about. It's but... a book, I'm sure. Oh, good. About well, your book. Oh, how nice. Well, I appreciate that. It makes, can they see you in there? Can you see yourself in there when you're talking to them? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi, and there's Jelena Morris's Hi, Roy. And Bonnie Clayton says, good morning, Roy, from Idaho. Good morning. Hi, Bonnie. Jennifer A. Hi, Roy. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Jenny. Great to hear from you. Lana Bessinger. Hi, Roy. Oh, you're handsome devil. <laughs> Isn't she nice? <laughs> she said you're what? I'm a handsome devil. You're handsome devil. <laughs> Good morning, Roy, from Karen Lewis. Hi there, Karen. L Linda says, Roy, you whoops, it just disappeared. Come down to something to beat. I, it, 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 hi, Cynthia. Hi, Roy. Coming to see you in June. Well, thanks. I'm looking forward to it, Cynthia. Ha, ha, ha. How do you make these go or stay? It's hard to tell, huh? Because all of a sudden they jump away. Cynthia Engel, Engie. Hi, Roy. Coming to see you in June. Hi there. Sounds Memorial like Wood Chorus Day. Hello from Bona Vista, Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Wow. Hi there. Jennifer Ann wants to know how my foot. Well, it's getting better, Jenny. <coughs> Lori Cochran, did you ever have a dog for a pet? Oh, yeah, the golden retriever used to run along with me. Uh, when I was riding my horse in the park, man, he was a runner, that dog. Really friendly, too. I don't know, Sandy Smith does it trick to jellyfish. I think it kills about everything. <laughs> oh, it's uh, unfortunate. Hi, hi, Doris Trumbet. Hi there, Linda. Boston Mass here, waiting to meet you. Well, looking forward to it, Linda. <laughs> Golly me, all these wonderful people, Rob. Boy, hear that osprey? Yeah. Here. here, do you want to take a picture of him? Here's your yeah, deal that guy. That was great, Rob. Yeah, bye, that was everybody. Great. Thanks so yeah, much. Let me flip the really camera. 
Oh gosh, I got in some crazy thing here. Hang on, folks. I don't know what I just did to the camera. <laughs> Sorry, you have to look at me. I can't see out here. There's so much glare on the screen. I'm trying to get out of, it's gotten into some crazy camera mode. There it is. There we go. Oh, sorry you had to look at me. But yeah, Roy, that was great. You got some, sounds like you're gonna be getting some hugs here in a few months, some people coming down. Well, I sure appreciate those. Yeah, that is awesome. Well, those are all people that are gonna buy your book. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Yep, the book's <laughs> gonna be a top seller <laughs> on the Southwest Florida television list. <laughs> it's gonna be our number one seller. That'll be a lot of fun. Yep, it'll be great. <laughs> Well, enjoy your, the rest of your morning and the rest of your book there. Thank you. It's a delightful time. Yep. You have to endure the dead fish and other than that, things are beautiful. Yeah. Life is always beautiful. Sure. No matter what. what. A couple little bumps in the road. A little bumps in the road, no big deal. That's it. Just a couple bumps. Keep Our, on trucking. Keep on trucking. All right, Roy. You have a good day. So what's a few broken axles? There you go. <laughs> a couple broken axles. Uh, tally ho. Have a good day, Rob. You too. Oh, what a trooper. I'm just going to give you one quick look around here before signing off. Pretty nice weather. Other than the fact we got that pesky old red tide. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to tell your friends about Southwest Florida Television. Be sure to check out Nonstop Naples, Nonstop Naples. There you'll find some fun things to do around town. Remember, we're going to be at Felipe's Mexican Restaurant up in North Naples tonight doing a little filming if you want to stop by. There's going to be a great band there, Unity Latin, great music. Food's good there. So come, come say hi, Felipe's. Check them out online and be sure to visit Nonstop Naples Facebook page and give that a like. Again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day wherever you might be in this big, beautiful world we live on. For Southwest Florida Television, I'm Rob Stan. God bless.